So if we're going to try to define the difference between supersaturated, saturated, and unsaturated solutions, I think it's easiest to start with a picture. We notice about a supersaturated solution is that it has 30 particles of solute in the same volume that a saturated solution has only 20 particles. And an unsaturated solution could have 10 particles or fewer than that. Really anything less than 20 in this circumstance down to zero would be an unsaturated solution and anything above 20 would be a supersaturated solution. Remember that the solute is the solid that is dissolved inside the solvent. Generally, water is going to be used as our solvent, but there are other oil or gasoline could be a solvent, and a solute is generally like something like sugar or um, an electrolyte like a salt. The three factors that can affect solubility would be whether we stir them up, would be the size of the particle, and oftentimes the nature of the particles in terms of what they will dissolve in, um, and temperature. You should have seen a graph that looks something like this that helps us understand the relationship between solubility and temperature. This tells us the number of grams of a salt that can dissolve in 100 grams of water and how that is affected by temperature as temperature goes up. We see that for the most of the particles here, um, we increase the solubility as the temperature goes up. We have one exception here, which is this um, one solute, and a lot of gases will be less soluble at higher temperature as well. When we're reading this graph, um, if we f um, want to know the number about the number that's on the line here, we remember that on the line means that it is a saturated solution. Above the line means that it's super saturated, and below the line means that it is unsaturated. do a, a pretty complicated problem here about potassium iodide and looking at molarity. Um, we want to know how many grams needed to be, need to be added um, to 2.5 liters of solution to create a solution with concentration of 0.35 molar. So we want our molarity to be 0.35 moles per liter. Um, and we have a volume here of 2.5 liters, right? So we know that um, our definition of molarity is moles per liter. And we need to start by calculating how many moles we need. Uh, we will then convert that into the grams that are required here. So we're going to say molarity times liter gives us moles. So we have 0.35 times 2.5. And we are going to be looking for 0.875 moles of potassium iodide. But our problem asks for the answer in grams. So we're going to have to convert this moles into grams. The first step in that process is to look, is to um, calculate the molar mass. Potassium iodide, which is Ki, has one potassium at 39.098 and one iodide at 126.90. So we add that up and we get a molar mass of 165.998 grams per mole. Last step is going to be to say we have what we want, 0.875 moles of Ki. Each mole, each one mole of Ki has a mass of 165.998 grams. So our moles of Ki will cancel out with our moles of Ki, and we're left with grams over here. And our final calculation would be 145.25 grams of potassium iodide to make our solution.